for me, the bottom line is it's a, it's a fairly simple calculus. Um, tap works. Uh, you know, the, the, the system actually works. Uh, you, you were talking yesterday with the superintendents about how um, prior to introducing TAP, you and your research team spent about, I think you said about 13 years, right. actually doing research and looking at effective practices around the country and really, you know, um, putting together uh, the, the research behind what has become the TAP system. And you can, you can tell. Uh, you can see that. Um, you know, I think what we find uh, when we look at uh, the system in Knoxville, certainly the instructional rubric is just an outstanding research-based uh, blueprint for what great teaching looks like. And then when you couple that with uh, the support uh, from master and mentor teachers and the collaboration and cluster um, and, and putting in, in place um, the performance-based compensation that goes along with that. I mean, those are just sort of common sense uh, supports that uh, that make the package, uh, you know, work. And so I, I think um, it, it helps us uh, at the end of the day to just focus on continuous improvement of classroom instruction. But that's Jim, you, you today you have 88 schools in your district, mm -hmm. and how many schools are TAP schools? 18. 18. And what has been the impact? throughout the district, has there been impact throughout the district on your non-TAP schools as a result of the 18 TAP schools? Oh, absolutely. I'm, I mean, when we look at, I think what we've tried to do in, uh, in Knoxville is really learn from, uh, from TAP and take uh, the elements that are, are critical to TAP in teacher collaboration and teacher leadership and accountability through uh, an excellent evaluation tool and performance-based compensation and um, really integrate those into all of our schools. So we have 18 TAP schools, but we have 70, going on 71, uh, schools that have benefited from what we've learned from TAP. And so we've done that in different ways. You know, we've put in place uh, teacher, we've, we've really embraced teacher leadership in a variety of different ways and making sure that we have things like instructional coaches, but also we now have in, in Knoxville, in our non-TAP schools, what we call lead teachers, who are peer evaluators. Uh, they are not unlike, I, I sort of think of them as mentor teachers. Uh, they're not quite, uh, you know, they still have classroom responsibilities and things of that nature. But, you know, they are, they are uh, doing observations. They're part of the evaluation process. So we've embraced that. Um, we certainly have embraced the notion of teacher collaboration and professional learning communities. It's not as intensive, it's not as robust as the support and collaboration that you have in our TAP schools. But we're learning a lot from what's happening in our classrooms, our, our TAP schools, and trying to integrate that across. And now we, we also have, of course, in the state of Tennessee, the, uh, the instructional rubric is now the default evaluation instrument for all of the state of Tennessee. And we, we uh, along with, with Gary and some other folks, lobbied hard for that. We thought it was the right thing to do. Uh, so we now have that, the instructional rubric, in all uh, of our Knox County schools, and we also put in place a strategic compensation initiative. Uh, we call it APEX, which is again not quite as robust as the as the TAP incentives, but it is. Um, you know, we, so we think those four elements are the right uh, are the right components for comprehensive school reform and improvement. And so we've taken what we've learned from TAP and what we what we continue to learn from TAP, and have tried to integrate it across all of our schools in our in our school system.